Well, in 1999, John F. Kennedy Jr. dies in a small plane crash. Were you close to him at all? Very close. In Very fact, close. I was waiting for him. I was having, I was supposed to have dinner with him that night. Oh my God, really? Yeah, I was waiting for him at his house in the Cape for him and Carolyn. And it got later and later. And then I, uh, I just started having a bad feeling. You know, that night, and um, it was one of those things when you know, you know, that it's, uh, that it's a bad news. And, um, yeah, we were very, very close. Sorry for your loss. Um, you know, because of that, along with your father and your uncle, people started to coin it the, the Kennedy curse. Does that bother you when you hear that? It doesn't bother me. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't put any stock in it. Uh, I, I, you know, I don't, it's not something that I, I tell people don't talk about the Kennedy curse. I mean, a lot of people in my family have died young. Yeah. Um, you know, my uncle said about my, my cousin, John, uh, he said he had every gift except for gray hair. God gave him every gift but gray hair. And I think that can be said true of a lot of members of my family. Yeah. Well, in 2000, you endorsed Vice President Al Gore for his presidential campaign. Were you surprised that he didn't win? Um, yes, I was surprised. And, I, you know, I wrote an article, actually an award-winning article for Rolling Stone, uh, uh, raising doubts about the legitimacy of that election um, because of the voting, voter suppression and voting fraud that took place in six Ohio counties. Right. I mean... When you compare it to what happened with Donald Trump, do you think that there was election interference or do you think that Trump? You know, I don't, I really don't know. I mean, my suspicion is that there was no, that, that, uh, that the election results are, are legitimate. That's my prejudice. But I, you know, I, I really don't, I wouldn't make that assertion without having really looked into it. And it's not something that I looked into. What I don't think is right uh, I, th I don't think it's a threat to democracy for people to say the election was fixed. I mean, we said it in 2001, it was fixed, you know, Bush Gore. And, uh, oh, that's, sorry, Bush Gore was 2001. I, uh, it was Kerry who, you know, in 2004 that I won the, um, the, you know, that I wrote that article about. Right. So I thought the election was fixed in 2004, that it was, you know, we got the wrong result. I think that everybody agrees that 2001 was, you know, was fixed. And so I, you know, from, I don't think, I think the election systems are broken. We need to change the way that we can't rely just on machines. We need paper ballots. Um, and then there's other changes that we ought to make. I mean, we listen, we have a whole city called Las Vegas that was built on, you know, the capacity of machines to count right and not make mistakes, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and there's ATMs on every corner in every city in this country right. that never give you too much money. <laughs> so we know how to make a, a machine that can count right. And it's our election system. We're supposed right. to be the world's exemplary democracy, right? So, uh, number one, we should be able to, we should have machines that everybody has faith in that can't be hacked, you know. And I, I don't, you could probably hack a, an ATM. I don't know. But, you know, you don't hear about it a lot. So, somehow those machines are built, you know, I mean, they wouldn't be there if they were easy to hack, right? The, the banks wouldn't keep them there. Oh, we must be able to build a machine that can't be hacked. And we also ought to have the safeguard of having paper ballots at every voting booth. And then, you know, I, I have a, you know, one of the things that I'm going to do as president is I'm going to make passport cards available to every American who needs, a, who can't afford them for free. That will allow us to demand ID at the voting booth, which Democrats don't like you know, laws that require voter ID because a lot of their constituents don't have driver's license. In, you know, blacks in the cities, a lot of particularly young black people do not have driver's license because they don't need them. There's elderly people all over the country who, who, who have expired driver's license and so they don't get a new one. 
And there are a lot of students in the country and young people who don't have their licenses. So Democrats don't like laws that say you need a driver's license or you need a, a, a picture ID to get, you know, to, to vote because they think that that's going to disenfranchise their principal constituents. Republicans in turn have anxiety that there's cheating going on, there's voter fraud, and there's an easy way to settle to, to solve this for, both, for everybody, which is right now it costs 65 bucks to get a federally issued photo ID, which is a passport card, just the card. It's not the book, it's the card. What I'm going to do is I'm going to waive that fee. That's a barrier to a lot of people. Um, I'm going to waive that fee so that anybody can go to any local post office and with proof of citizenship and get that ID. What does that do? Here's what it does. Number one, it, it gets the, 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 uh, the constituent, the democratic powerhouses. I mean, Andrew Young's already agreed to this. The civil rights leaders, uh, Al Sharpton and others have said, if, uh, if we do that, they will drop their objections to the to a requirement of photo ID at the voting booth. So you solve all those problems, those anxieties between Republicans, those friction between Democrats and Republicans. Number two, if you don't have a voter ID in this country, you're a second class citizen. You can't get a bank account. You can't open a bank account. Wow, okay. <laughs> you can't. That means if you get your Social Security check, and a lot of Americans are living like this, you get your Social Security check or your paycheck, you have to go to a check casher. And that guy's taking 10%. Exactly. Oh, you know, it's already poor, hard to be poor. Yeah. And it just, everything makes it harder. You can't get on an airplane. You can't get a hotel room. Mm -hmm. You can't, uh, you can't visit your child at school without mm -hmm. a government issued photo ID. Yeah. So your life is terrible, right? More terrible than, than, it, than it already is, than being poor already makes it. The other thing it does is by giving, getting these photo IDs to everybody is it stops the immigration crisis of the border. Because right now, if you're an employer, let's say you're a construction firm in New York, and you want to hire illegal aliens, it's, Ill it's illegal for you to do that. But all you have to ask for is a Social Security card, and then you check the box. And that's all the government demands of you. Social Security card has no photo on it. Right. It's easy to fabricate. You're passed from yeah. hand to hand. Yeah, it's made out of paper, yeah. And then they they give the guy, you know, they're, uh, they're paying the guy, you know, $7, $8, 12 bucks an hour on a construction site. That firm, these unscrupulous firms who are knowingly doing this because they know they can get away with it, are now bidding for contracts against union shops. Hmm. So there's, you know, they're screwing everybody. Well, if you just say you can't get a job in this country unless you show a government-issued photo ID of passport card, and we make sure everybody's got one who's legal, what it means is nobody comes across that border again because yeah. everybody is coming across because they want a job. If they know they cannot get a job in the United States of America without that card, they're going to stop coming, and that solves the problem overnight. I love it.